Hello and welcome to our second webinar for today. Um, my name is Thomas Bandhofer. I'm CEO and founder of Connecting Software. And I'm proud to present our guest speaker today, Patrick Anderson. He is an IT pro working for huge enterprises, making big IT implementation projects very successful, mainly in the area of SharePoint and CRM. Yeah. Um, Patrick will explain the solution and the, uh, the, uh, the, demo. the demo later on. And first I want to give you some ideas about the company which you are talking about today. Um, yeah, Connecting Software is one of the highest certified partner companies of the Microsoft ecosystems. We have five gold certifications to silver. Uh, we started 10 years ago and belong to the CNS group. Um, the integration platform, the Connect Bridge, what we are talking today, we developed since five years, nearly six. Our headquarter is in Austria, in Vienna, the beautiful city of music and very good IT engineers. And we have US offices in Denver and Palo Alto uh, since last year and we start last year to go to the US market as a first good success. Meanwhile, we have a few hundred installations, mainly via our partner and our partner ecosystem. And the thing or the webinar, what we say and what we want to do today, we got an invitation a few weeks ago from Microsoft and they asked us, hey, can you do with your platform as well this right uh, replication from CRM to SharePoint? And after a few days, we, we present them the first solution and now we make the webinar for today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the, uh, the questionnaire or in the chat. We will answer them by our experts sitting here. And yeah, that's it. What I want to say right now, um, just to give you a short, bigger view, we are not only in CRM and SharePoint at home. We can go from any software of the last years, 20 years, and can connect to our connectors. Uh, live and bi-directional, which is more than just CRM and SharePoint, like SAP, Salesforce, uh, Exchange, or Exchange Service, PowerShell, Dropbox, and so on. We are continuously developing new connectors, and all of them are on-prem, in the cloud, or mixed. And we even can do orchestrate uh, multiple systems with different kind of versions, all in the same way. But I don't want to talk too long. I think Patrick will take over the show, and I will hand it over to you now, Patrick. Please, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, having me here. Uh, yeah, Thomas and I go back uh, a couple of years now. We were able to do a um, development project with one of the, the sister companies of Connect Bridge a couple of years ago, and that's when I got to know the uh, Connect Bridge software. Myself, I do a lot of uh, uh, projects where we try to do business IT alignment, where we try to really put the systems like an SAP system, SharePoint, CRM system, to really focus on the business needs on the processes and one of the biggest challenges there is integration and integration is always complicated it's always risky so i was quite um, skeptical at first when i when i heard about the connect bridge and what they claimed it would do but they allowed me to play with it a little bit and then we did a couple of things together it's actually quite an amazing product and uh, without going into too much detail i'd like to show you a little bit of the concept because it's quite a bit different from concepts that you uh, will find in other uh, middleware programs. The thing is, you have a ConnectBridge server. The ConnectBridge server actually runs in a Windows machine as a Windows service, or it can even run in Azure as a worker role. And it's very small, very lightweight. It doesn't store any data in the middle, so it just transfers the stuff. And then you have the connectors. We've got connectors to Exchange, from Exchange 2000 to the most modern one. You've got SharePoint connectors and so on. These connectors could work with the REST interface. They could work with the client-side object model. They can work with the SDKs, the ones provided, etc. The only thing you need as an integrator uh, to, in order to work with is you need to be able, from your own system, to have either an ODPC or JDPC driver. The program uses SQL as their command language. It doesn't mean, it's a common misunderstanding, it doesn't mean that you use the SQL to go in the underlying database of, let's say, Exchange or SharePoint, which would be rather fatal, to be quite honest. Um, but what you are going to do is you use a select star from um, account or from a calendar, for example, to get all the data. The Connect Bridge will then translate this into the proper SDK or, or, or 
REST call, and you don't have to worry at all about the various interfaces anymore. ConnectBridge takes care of all of that completely, uh, which makes development of solutions, integration solutions, much, much quicker. So without going into too much detail, there are plenty of uh, demos and uh, um, uh, various uh, tutorials online, and I'm, free, I'm sure Thomas can, can guide you there. Um, today we want to look at something a bit more specific. Um, if you have done any CRM or SharePoint projects, you probably know that problem. Um, Microsoft Dynamics CRM is very, very good at uh, doing various CM-related stuff, storing uh, accounts, storing leads, opportunities, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but they're not very good at storing documents. And um, Microsoft provides a, a link to SharePoint to uh, store the documents over there. The problem with that solution is that you have, a, you have to maintain the permission model. The tricky bit about SharePoint is that it inherits permission from top sites. So you have to break those permissions, but that means manual uh, maintenance of permissions, which is okay if you have one or two users, but you have a couple of hundred users that constantly change this thing, you've got a problem. Um, ConnectBridge was able to solve this quite easily, basically as a sample case, I think, to prove how quickly this is. I mean, this was one of the things that really impressed me in the early days when uh, we had a, we got a challenge in from Microsoft when they just had launched their CRM cloud. And uh, the challenge was, okay, we'll give you access to the American cloud, CRM cloud, the European cloud, the Asian cloud. Can you actually connect these and provide some sort of filtering process on it? And we were not quite sure we could do this. Um, we had a standard connector to the local CRM system, and we found out quite nicely that it would also work with the um, cloud system. And from then on, it was just a day to get this sorted out. We did spend two days of testing just to make sure. They went back to Microsoft and said, listen, this is the solution, and here we can do it. And they were quite uh, flabbergasted because they, nobody else was, had been able to, to meet that challenge. So the thing is, it, 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 providing solutions with this is really, really quick, and you don't have to learn a GUI or something like that. But let's jump right in. Let's have a quick look. We have a, a little demo environment for you, which is hopefully working. As you know, demo environments are always very interesting to work with. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, this is sort of like a complete clean CRM 2013. This, of course, also works with 2011 CRM. And we've got a little SharePoint environment here, also 2013, just over a little bit. Uh, the other thing that we have, we've built for you for this case, is a little um, uh, event viewer that will show you when our little solution accesses the Connect Bridge and the Connect Bridge provides some sort of functionality within that solution because it's actually happening automatically in the background. So there's nothing, no button to press or something else to do. Um, so let's get right on with it. Uh, let's start by creating an account. And create a new account. Uh, save that. Okay, now I've got the webinar account. For that account, we should also uh, provide a document. So let's go into the documents environment. I know it looks a hell of a lot different to 2011. I'm still struggling with that as well, so bear with me. Um, so we haven't got a, a folder yet, and uh, CRM will automatically uh, suggest a folder name and provide it. So we click on that, and you see how quickly this is done. I can move over to the event location, and here we go. We already got the event with the synchronization. Now if we move over to the SharePoint and actually just replicate it, yeah, there it is. Sometimes you have to press the right button. So it has the folder, and let's now load up something. Let's create a, a new Word document. And save that Word document first on the desktop. And I'm going back to the CRM, and I'm going to upload that document into CRM.
pressing OK helps. Here we got our little document. And if I have a look at this, there is our little document. Didn't create an event because the document is directly stored. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to a new environment and I'm going to use a different demo user. As you might have noticed, if you are keen on this, we have demo user 02. And now I'm going to go in here and use demo user 03. Let me just copy that because we're going to use this a couple of times, so don't want to spend too much time typing this. Right, and as you can see here, the demo user 03, of course, doesn't see the folder of the document because they haven't got any kind of rights on it. Okay, let's give them some rights. Let's go back into the environment of the account here in CRM. And let's share this. And I can add the 03 user and select it. Add it. And as you can see here, we've got read only rights. And I will share this. Let's go here. And already I'm even too slow. We got this rights transfer was already done uh, by the Connect Bridge, as you can see here in the event viewer. And let's not just take my word for it. Let's go and have a look. So I'll refresh this. Here we got it. And I can go in there. You see test demo user 03. So it's the new one. I just didn't have access. So if I open that one up now, of course I'll get the virus warning. Then I have to log in quickly. Okay. So and remember, we've got read-only rights at the moment. So I'll enable edit editing here. And I'll do my first right, test one. Okay. Let's try and save this document now. Okay, of course, it's asked me. Yes, let's overwrite this. And there we go. It's read-only file. So the SharePoint has actually taken the command, the permission command, just take it read only and executes it right there. Um, let's cancel that. And save that. And let's go back to our other environment and let us give them write permissions. So here yeah, again we are in CRM right now. I give them write permissions. Again I click on share. So have a quick look here, bang, already here we've got our new, uh, new entry that the Connect Bridge has actually synchronized the permissions already in the background. And let's go back and find our 03 chap here. Uh, let's do a refresh for safety's sake and open up the document. Again, I'm in here as demo user 03 who's just had his Rights changed. And uh, let me just quickly enable editing. So, write test two. And this time around, hopefully, now nah, of course, everything's fine. Let me just do a refresh so you can even see it. So, demo user 03, test doc. And now let's go back and have a look at the SharePoint of demo user 02, refresh that as well. And if I open this up as demo user, I see here demo user 03 has changed something. If I open the test doc, I can actually see that my test 2 was done professionally. Pretty cool. So as you can see here, the, the rights actually do get transferred. Um, perhaps to get, if you want to get a little bit of a view how this works in the background, let me show you a very, very useful tool that people use to get used to the um, environment. It's called the uh, Connect Bridge Query Analyzer. Those of you who have actually worked with uh, SQL Server at some point in time will recognize this is very, very closely modeled to that solution, the Query Analyzer SQL Server. I've got all my various uh, plugins here. Um, I can open that plugin, 
So in this case, I can open CRM, for example. I can see as tables we keep in line with the database uh, no, uh, nomenclature. Um, Store procedures, by the way, are uh, codes of functionality that uh, CNS Connect Bridge provides for you to access directly. So if you want a bulk insert or something like that, you don't need to program that. You just call the store procedure uh, from your own code. I'll show you how, what this looks like in a minute. And it gets, it gets executed very quickly on the server, and you don't have to worry about this anymore. You can pass parameters and everything. So here I can see the... the um, the entirety of the entity model of CRM, everything. If you do this in NAV, you get like, I don't know, 700 or 1,000 entities. Um, and I can go in here and could just simply say select star from account. Press F5. And here we go. We've got our accounts. And if I just change to name so you can see that my account is really there. Webinar account one, you can see it right there. So this is how you can actually test against uh, any kind. You can do inserts, uh, you can do joins, whatever. What you do then is you take all these tests that you did with the query analyzer, for example, and then you put them in your own code, into your own environment. And uh, let me just quickly show you what this looks like. So for example, here we've got an example of a C-sharp code somebody has written. And actually, the only place where they where they connect to the um, media gate, uh, the connect bridge. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was the old, the old, name. The old name. And it, yeah, you see, I've been working so long with this stuff. Um, you see here, select system user full name, etc. Where disabled is not true. Um, this is this is the command that gets passed um, via ODPC or JDPC in this case ODPC to the connect bridge software. Uh, let me show you another one. Here you can see, and don't bother worry about the code. What, what I'd like to show you here is you've got the exec code here. So in this code, you exec the select users, which is a store procedure that is in the uh, connect bridge already for you there, ready to use. And instead of writing some long kind of stuff, you just execute that store procedure, provide a return value, end of story. You've got it, you can do it, you can use it, and you can provide the logic for yourself. Maybe just to say one thing, that what we showed before is more uh, one out-of-the-box solution which you can uh, purchase or implement very easy and simply. Mm -hmm. uh, but what Patrick shows you right now is, is a much more complicated things you can do. You can really model business processes, synchronizations, migrations, integrations processes, and not only this data, also with files, with uh, pictures, video, documents, whatever. Mm -hmm. So and even in the big data or in social or this mobile solutions. So it's a really powerful tool and a platform what makes system integrators and customers very, very happy because they can mm -hmm. solve nearly all of their problems in the integration needs. Yeah, let me perhaps show you one more slide. Uh, I mean, we did look at this slide here, which is the slide for the system integrator. So if, if you go in there as a consultant and you quickly need to uh, be able to integrate a CRM with a SharePoint and a vision with an exchange or, or, or something like that. Uh, this would be the kind of solution you would be looking at. But another solution, which is also quite interesting, if there, even if there is no connector, if there's no plugin available yet, let's say for a AS400, as long as you have a ODPC driver, JDPC driver, you can access web services, you can actually, from within your own application, access the Connect Bridge and access every other product that exists out there that has a plugin. So if I wanted to integrate, if I wanted to get all my calendar entries from my Exchange 2000 into my AS400, it's one line of code. Select, start from, uh, what did I say? Calendar entries, appointments. appointments. Yeah. yeah, that's it. End of story. So it really works like that. If you don't believe me, just, you know, take it out for a demo. Yeah. Demo. It's the same thing. I mean, I didn't believe it when I, when I first looked at it, and uh, it uh, really turned out to work that way. It's not what it, what it is not, and that's something perhaps if, if some people who know other products who have, like, very really complex GUIs where you can do, like, drag around some, some uh, rectangles and connect things, this is not available. This, this is not provided. So if you're the, the rectangle kind of drawer thing, then 
you might have to look at other programs. But if you want a, if you have a, if you have a program available, it really doesn't matter which kind of language you have. Um, they can extremely quickly and easily provide you with a solution, and they don't have to worry about the uh, the various interface requirements in an exchange, in a SharePoint, whatever. Yeah, yeah I think this is this is the end of my. I want to hand back to you. So Thank we you. haven't seen any questions so far. So yeah, this, this is, is the time for questions. In the last webinar, we were asked what areas does it cover. Um, we are not only user; we have also teams, access teams, access team templates, security roles, sharing, business units. And possible scenarios, what we have is add remove security role to user, uh, add remove security role to teams, um, remove user to teams or security roles, create security roles and assign to some user or teams, uh, grant, modify, revoke access to user teams or access teams uh, with sharing. So plenty of, of different possibilities are covered with this solution yeah. already. Let me show something else that came up in the last webinar, with whether their parent-child relationships, for example, uh, can be taken care of. And I'd like, really like to show you that uh, in, in the live environment, because it's, it's really cool, because you can go in here and say, select a uh, star from, I hope I get this right, role, I think it is. And if not, I can look it up on this. So let's give it a, yeah, role is right. So I can go in there, and I have all the roles in there. And uh, let's get the role ID and copy that. So let's say start from, I think it was role privileges. Privileges, did I write this way? Okay, where role ID equals, and now I paste the role ID I just copied. Let's give it a go. And now I get for this role ID and child relationship all the privileges, and I can do a lookup on the privilege depth mass. It's that easy. It's really, really nice. I mean, this is only to try it out in the query analyzer, but I can do this from any kind of program as well. Uh, and that's really what I like about this program. You can just, you know, you get a question, you just look it up, you try it out in, with the various entities, and five, six minutes later, you've got a solution. So I have still no questions. <laughs> Come on, guys, wake up. Or maybe we disable them. <laughs> Have a look. Did we, 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 we disable them? No, I don't think we disabled anyone. Hmm? Ah, there we go. Um, so ah, okay, there's there. David. Yeah, I'm confused. Are you storing the access rights in SharePoint against individual files, or are you storing them outside of SharePoint? No, David, we, we, don't, uh, we don't store any access rights. What we have is a system user in the background that you can give certain rights, and uh, we always take the permission model that is uh, in the various systems, so in CRM, for example, and we basically map it to an equivalent permission model in SharePoint. So if we say we have a um, salesperson in CRM and they have certain read-write access, then there will be a contributor in SharePoint. Uh, but you can change that as well. But no, we don't store anything. We just we just transfer, and we we have we also hold no data. It's just being uh, translated basically into the appropriate environment. I hope this answers your question. Okay, Colin asks: Supplying permissions at file level may affect SharePoint performance for high numbers of files that are permissioned. Uh, in a way that breaks inheritance from the parent folder. Okay, let me just hand over to uh, Thomas here, who is our resident specialist, because Thomas can explain that it's actually not the file size that matters, but the folder number that matters, because we've got uh, the rights on the folders and not on the files. Did you get it, Thomas? Okay. So we'll, I'll, I'll read the exact, because I don't want to give you any exact answer to that question, so get that. Very good question. Yeah. The, usually the thing is what, what people think it's 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 a document. The documents are the, the bottleneck, but the bottleneck bottleneck so to speak is uh, actually uh, the the folders and the number of users. I mean we if you if, if you want the benchmark for example we, we have uh, about is that fifty users per no 20, 20 users in 
Um, Thomas, can you give me an answer to that, please? The number of users we did on the benchmark. Yeah, it was just a couple of milliseconds with 20 users and 100 folded, right? Not yeah, on the on the read side, the CRM side. The SharePoint side was a bit longer because it was a write operation. But we, as we're using the client side object model, we're carrying that directly. Uh, we got a bit more power than if we were just using the REST interface. So the begin to transfer all the rights from the CRM to the SharePoint, that could be a little bit of a bulk operation. Bulk yes. operation, but afterwards in the live environment, it, it's faster to get transfer the rights than to open a document within SharePoint. So you will not feel that there is something going on inside there. Yeah, plus it only does the deltas afterwards. So it doesn't, it doesn't really do, have to iterate through the entire uh, uh, group. Take it again. Yeah, David, the, 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 it's folder level. It's folder level. I mean, you can go down on file level as well, but we don't recommend that. But we, we would say use the folder to set the rights to the folder because this is also the concept that you will have in CRM. Great. Happy to answer your question, Colin. Um, any more questions you have? Okay, David asked, we're syncing access rights to SharePoint. Yeah, that's one scenario. That is quite true. You can sync anything between uh, SharePoint and any of the other programs. You can see here, for example, let me just go back um, and uh, close that CRM table and open perhaps the SharePoint. You see it takes a little while. And by the way, this, the, this list of entities that you see here in tables, let me just enlarge this a little bit so you can see this on the screens, is actually dynamically created. So if there were any custom entities you create in the meantime, they would be here as well. And you can see here, for example, I've got the documents, I've got the account, uh, everything that is made available on the uh, site assets, site pages, tasks. Um, I can access that based on the privileges that I've provided. And I can say select staff from tasks and then put them into the exchange if I had an exchange uh, environment here as well by inserting it with the proper entity. And yes, Colin, it works also with SharePoint 2010. Yeah, sure. And online. So And Office 365, yes. And there are beautiful scenarios where we also integrate uh, Exchange Server in these processes where you uh, store or get information using SharePoint as a visualization of, of Exchange functionality and so on. Yeah. Um, another very nice thing what we did for other customers is, is using pull operations into the CRM where we, where we make 200,000 and more records in one hour. Um, quite powerful, getting all the data over the night from the, uh, from the ERP system, what change, what new products, uh, contracts, whatever happens, stored in a, in a very, very huge amount of data. So, um, yeah, so there's one scenario that is also quite easy, which tends to be a bit of a trouble otherwise, is um, when you connect the CRM to an ERP system, or even the, like the championship uh, league if you have to uh, connect the CRM and the SharePoint with the ERP system and have like a three-way workflow and you can do this as well here this is, it works actually quite nicely now, even down to the level that you change field permissions like for example you have this classical scenario that you have an account uh, in CRM and the moment this account they become a customer uh, you have to actually lock certain fields because then accounting takes over and for example once they hit the the VAT number, the tax number they put in there, and certain fields need to be locked because then it, it has, in some countries, it has relevance to the revenue service, the internal revenue, the IRS. And that is something, for example, you can handle with the media gateway quite well. You, you query, keep querying the, the IP system, and the moment something changes there, certain fields, you lock the fields in the CRM or in SharePoint. But anyway, so we no, really good. invite you guys who have very, very good questions and if the time is too long, we invite you to make a session, directly session, yeah. just not face to face, but monitor to monitor and go deeper into your concrete question, what you have in your projects. Um, Tomas, I've got another question from Colin. 
Colin, we just handed over the the uh, question to Tomas. Uh, as far as I know, we do we, we, we can provide some logging, but uh, usually you, you you try and rely on the, the because you don't want overly much overhead in the server environment. The server environment, especially when you're like in the Azure uh, worker role, you try to make this as lean as possible. So um, you can have both things in a way. You can have a logging as you can as you were able to see in the demo environment. Uh, we have a logging ability that you can use, uh, but we recommend that outside of the development, you try and do the logging within the target environments once you've set, you've actually developed it and, and deployed it. So I hope that answers your question, Colin. But you can feel free to, to, to you're most welcome. Uh, you can afterwards chat with, with, with Thomas a little bit, who can give you much more detailed answer. Thomas is fine. All right. Um, anyone else who wishes to answer, close a question? Yeah. Um, just what I want to say, we have our, our uh, specialists in the United States, which you can address via the Office America email address, and then we can provide you to the appropriate person, either in Denver or in, uh, Silicon, in the Silicon Valley, or you can come directly to us. We invite you for demo for product walkthrough in a very detailed way, whatever you want to know and need. And I think Colin, we talked yesterday, so please um, feel free to make an appointment that we can really go deep into your things, what you want to know and, and to see. Because just now the, the webinar is too short to, to give you yeah. a real deep dive into, into the Connect Bridge. Uh, but I hope we, we gave you a little bit of a dip into the environment and into the matter based on the, the subject matter that was chosen here for this webinar. The thing is, it's, it's a really a, a product that has a very diverse set of users. And uh, uh, if you talk to, uh, to us on a one-to-one -one basis, we can, we can see what your issues and problems are and whether ConnectBridge can solve it. We'll also say to you if, if we can't solve it here, because quite simply, we don't really want uh, a situation where uh, this would be the wrong product. Uh, for you, so I think, yeah. and I've, I've had scenarios where, where I have to say, because for example, we had one client, they really, really wanted a GUI-based uh, product because they wanted their, uh, purely their business analysts to do it, and in that case, um, well, they weren't quite happy with the other solution, but uh, we can and, say, okay, there's no GUI for this here, we have to use this, and they didn't want it, so. Yeah, and another possibility to meet us, um, I'm at the BPC in Washington in two weeks, so if someone of you is there, please. Give me a call. We can go for a directly face-to-face -face without monitor chat. I would really highly appreciate to, to see you in live and real. Sure. So, any more questions? Ah, oh, yeah, we get we get some. No, I don't think I think we're good. David, I think has a that's the question. Oh, that was the last one. Okay, now that's it. Right. Good. So, if there are no more questions, thank we'll, you we'll, very much. We'll stay online for yeah. a couple of minutes afterwards, so you can you can still pose some questions via the chat window. We'll just switch off the web the webcam and everything. But um, yeah, perhaps you want to close? Oh, I don't want to close. I would like to talk to you guys, but the time is short, I think, and as far we cannot get. David, maybe he's writing. We'll stay online. So I think uh, we can close yeah. the session for now. And yeah, thank, thank, you, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you, Patrick.